Hello my soccer universe. Well, while the league might go into a really interesting phase this year with a true title fight, with Salzburg a little bit dropping off, so being closer to the competition and also the fight for the top six is really exciting. Overall, all is not well in the country of the mountains and at the river. This is a reference to the national anthem we had on national holiday on Saturday. So, you know, it was a long weekend for everyone and as always there was also my birthday in there. As you know, you've seen the video, but yes, the European performance is not looking good. I mean, Rapid got a win, but let me show you a little graph right here where you see the ratings, how they have developed during this season. And I don't want you to focus on particular lines, but the overall trend goes downward. And this was a really bad week. Austria is losing positions fast. In European competition which means there will soon probably be less European spots available for the Austria Bundesliga after a really successful period propped up by Salzburg but also by other teams as well. We need points in Europe. Rapid and Lask probably other ones that have to pick up the slack but also Salzburg have to just win certain games but Salzburg are in a real real funk. Now I don't want to go in a really deep analysis here because I think the video will anyway be long enough, but I have a feeling that Salzburg's recruiting strategy is partly to blame for that, because you're selling off the best players to bigger leagues, you make a whole lot of money. However, the replacements get younger and younger and younger and younger, and so the level cannot really keep up with that. Add to it a little bit of unrest with coaching changes, especially at the beginning of last season, and I thought they had actually reacted quite well initially. However, it really did not work out and at the moment Linders does not work as well. And it has to be said very, very clearly that I think the transfer strategy this summer was not a good one because it upset the whole feel of the team. No good signs. Sturm Graz also have lost an important player. They have lost now the sporting director, but Sturm Graz are still the shining light in the Austrian league and rapid potentially, which is overall exciting for a league, maybe not for people that are not supporting rapid. Same thing a little bit goes for Lusk, the other team that you would expect to make some points in Europe, but there has been so much unrest at the club and you don't help yourself. You really don't help yourself with that. And I think those factors really play into the Austrian Bundesliga not performing well in Europe this time around. As I said, on the flip side, we have a really exciting league at the moment, although my team, Lusk, is not where I would like it to be. So with that little preamble, let's go right into the games. And the new coach Ingolic, Altach seemed definitely to be a changed team, however results are still not coming their way. This time they managed a 2-2 against Austria Klagenfurt at home, despite largely being the better team. They took a lead in the 19th minute through Friedrich's penalty, however just 5 minutes later, beautiful assist by Vanitzik, back healing it from a scoring position, back to Koch, who scores the equalizer. That was a really brilliant goal, and Klagenfurt is a really wily team. They actually take the lead through Vernitznik himself in the 51st minute, I don't want to say against the run of play, because Klagenfurt definitely had their chances in there. However, what came there was an onslaught by Altach, who had a penalty given for them, but then it turns out it was not really a foul in the end. Call in the 72nd get the deserved equalizer. They were pushing for the win. They just cannot get it done. The performances for Altach are better. However, results need to follow. And I also have to mention the two coaches, Peter Packold, 64 year old, Ingolich, 32 years, twice as young. After the game, Tirol must have felt they had a wrong movie. They were really good in the first half, actually having Austria Vienna on the ropes in Vienna. Really a good performance by them overall, like that last week against Lusk for about 20 25 minutes. However, there's former Tirol player Nick Prelitz, who after the half heads in a fit cross, of course, not celebrating. And then it goes only one way Plavotic in the 63rd and Malone in the 73rd. Add two more and Austria Vienna are now sitting in third place. Quite a turnaround given their rough start to the season. And under new coach Manfred Schmidt, Hartberg have only lost one game last week. They win their third home game now after being winless before he was hired. Hartberg seemed like a change team, definitely the team of the moment. And they were also bad, especially in the first half against blau weiss Linz, and took an early lead through a Walner own goal. Could have probably doubled the lead in the second half. Mijic very quickly doubles the lead, 50th minute. I think there was a back heel in there. However, then blau weiss Linz came. Ronivaldo, who was out with a neck injury, came in and suddenly 
Ronnie Blavis Lens had a little bit more belief. Ronnie Valdo very late on had one in, but it was too little too late. That gave actually Lusk the opportunity to maybe overtake the city rivals if they just could win at home. After having fired their successful promotion manager Messner, GRK were so close of celebrating the first victory under new coach Rene Poms. They were leading 1-0 through a nice Lichtenberger goal in the 69th minute against Rapid. And then it's a penalty in the 93rd minute that Bellio converts to make it 1-1. It has to be also that Rapid had plenty of chances, especially in the first half, to decide this game. However, it was not meant to be. And we almost had the big upset and the first win for GRK. And if you want to know how deep Salzburg have fallen, yes, they had more of the game against Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg reduced to 10 men in the 51st minute when Pink after a rough tankle was sent off, his first send off in his career. However, you expect a flurry and there were only some mad chances in there. In the end, Wolfsburg see it out, it's nil-nil. And it looks like Salzburg are really losing ground. And this might be pointing to Sturm to win the title again. Well, Lusk failed to give me a nice birthday present by beating Sturmgrads and in the process also overtaking Blau-Weiss Linz. This would have been just perfect. However, my hopes for that were relatively low because, you know, Sturmgrads had two days more after the Champions League game ahead of this game. Lusk also had the away game in Ljubljana and yes, it was a home game, so I guess travel evens out in a way. I was not very hopeful. Also, Sturmgrads were in much, much better form as of late, although Lusk from also looking up. Now, another slight downer was, of course, that my wife could not join because she did not really feel well, but I went with my two girls and actually had a quite nice time. I actually enjoyed it sitting between of them because it was my birthday hugging them and and so on it was also kind of the first cold game of the year i would say and so yeah it was actually quite nice we managed to stay warm great ahead of the game there was a huge and very spectacular team for probably one of the best i've seen in the new stadium so far celebrating 10 years of one of the ultra groups and it was quite spectacular i guess i'll show you a short video clip here And I have to say, overall, the mood in the stadium was also really good. I think it was over 15,000, which, yeah, Sturm Graz always brings fans. And it was also, you know, there's the fall vacation coming on for the kids now. So this means that there are many more that can will really come to these games. First half, though, A, it was all Sturm. B, there were hardly any goal-scoring chances. After the game, Markus Schopp said that it was kind of the tactic to give the ball in the first half to Sturm and then attack in the second half and go for the game because you need to manage a little bit the stress from, you know, coming off a European night. If that was that, okay. However, I really felt, I mean, early in the first minute, Sturmgras could have scored and they had another big one where a Beardus shot was just cleared off the line by Zier Eyes, but they didn't produce much more as well. I wanted to say up until Sturmgras made the first goal, the biggest chance came after a corner kick for Lusk. Ljubicic had a free header, but the corner kick was A, taken a tad too high, and so he kind of pushed it down into the net because he had the direction, everything right there. That would have been a little bit of a steal, I would say, and then it's a header by the smallest person on the field in Ota Kitashvili, who came back, probably one of the best, if not the best player in the Bundesliga at the moment, who after a cross heads it in free between two defenders, something that should not happen. However, 
one has to also say, yeah, Sturm deserved that lead. And it went in the halftime with a 1-0 lead for Sturm. And I was kind of, yeah, hmm, uh, not a good birthday performance so far. And add to that, uh, Sturm were playing towards the opposite end. We barely didn't see anything in front of us. That actually didn't change in the second half, but that, that was good because Lusk actually came out storming. But before that, this ultra group also unveiled another T for at halftime with many, many birthday candles. And that caused a fog stoppage for a, almost five six seven minutes what i was annoyed is that there was a sturm graz fan sitting behind us and i said ah oh, there should be a three nil for sturm graz because you on that was the only way to stop it when it is mostly sturm graz fans who are doing this stuff and rapid fans so this annoyed me a little bit you know i was about to say something but i said leave it i'm with my girls i want to actually enjoy my time and you know they waited a little bit too long if you were to ask me for the simple reason I guess that TV didn't see much but we could already see after like a three minute wait from goal to goal and it would have been fine. And then the game actually with some changes by Markus Schopp at half time actually then turned in Lusk's favor and the first chance to actually score after a Schul corner Smolcic who just had come on headed it in. And it's 1-1 one, one, and then the momentum was squarely with Lusk who maybe didn't create that many great chances but you could see that the game was going always into the Sturm direction. True, Sturm has the quality to hit you on the counter-attack and there were also some iffy situations there and when Lusk really went out for the win, I remember there was a free kick that Schul wants to take quick towards Bello, the ball doesn't arrive, Sturm has possession and a few situations where potentially the ball was out but from that a counter-attack came where it's then a cross in that seam handle because it's slightly flaky, only can clear forward to Zvonarek who slots it from the edge of the box into a more or less empty net. This was so unnecessary, yes you wanted to go for it for the win but you have to be a little bit more careful with the ball this resulted from a free kick that you had in the opposition half really annoyed me however Lusk was then really pushing had three glorious chances in the long stoppage time the best one probably the bello where he takes a shot and this guy just cannot score for us that is cleared in conjunction of goalie Skerpen and uh, Aiwu. On the line there was also one by Entrup where Skerpen then saved. I really thought we'll get an equalizer which I think I would have been okay with getting a 2-2 draw against Sturm Graz is a really good result. Would have drawn us level with blau weiss Linz as well although not overtaking them and I would be happy this would have been a perfect birthday in a way because Lusk usually played draws on my birthday. Nah. Was not meant to be. I still thought this was was a really good performance in the second half by Lusk, one that I'm looking optimistic forward of course now are extremely important weeks coming up not only in Europe but also in the league because now it is really down who will get in the top six and you will see what the next opponent will be. So at the halfway point of the regular season, we already have a feeling that Salzburg will not win this one despite having two games in hand. But even with those two games in hand, they're sitting two points behind Sturm Graz. Yes, things can change and you have to actually win those games in hand as well, which are against Hartberg and against Klagenfurt at home, which you would expect six points. But both of these teams are actually quite well coached overall. We have the two Vienna teams riding high, especially Austria Vienna is a little bit of a surprise. Rapid have done a really good job. They have been throughout the season been really really good but look at this fight for the top six it starts at Austria at 18 and arguably ends at Klagenfurt at 12 so this is within six points we have seven teams vying for four spots so that is really really exciting at the moment the inside track belongs of course to Austria Vienna you would say Salzburg as well Wolfsburg and Hartberg the two Linz teams seem to be like on the outside looking in, however there's still a lot to play. Last performance definitely not helped by the very very poor start to the season with five losses in a row. Everything else was actually kind of okay. And on the bottom, GRK seemed to be down now, but Alter and Tirol also do not have many points. Given the points will be halved, I think the relegation battle will also be quite exciting. And on top, we are looking at a classic mid the Sturm Graz against Rapid title fight. Maybe Salzburg can join, but I think Sturm Graz against Rapid in a title fight. That is a very enticing prospect, I have to say. As a not quite neutral, but more or less, I know that Lask will not win. So I'm sort of neutral. Who else will win it? We 
When looking at the upcoming games, we first have a cup round in midweek, so there's no rest for the Austrian teams. Lask have to go to Volzberg, that is south of Graz, so it's typically Styrian weeks, we are still in Graz now. We were actually in Ljubljana, which used to be part of Styria, and we will see that we'll play another Styrian opponent on the weekend, so absolutely that. There's not really a standard tie, I would say Wolfsburg against Klagenfurt is probably the one because that's a local derby that is in the doubled up also on the weekend. We also have Sturm Graz against Blau Weiss Linz, although this should be relatively straightforward and another bonus league derby between Salzburg and Tyrol. Given how Salzburg are playing, hmm, this could be a tighter one. And I already have hinted at it, it's Styrian Weeks for Lask, we play Hartberg, the team that is just ahead of us and that have a game less. So this is a, almost a must-win scenario if you want to go top six. Yes, there's a whole other season to be played, but I think it would be a very important win. But most importantly, we have Sturm Graz against Rapid. As I said, there might be a title fight between those two, so that is an, definitely an interesting one. And as I said, the Canton Derby sees two installations this weekend, one in the Cup and one in the League. The first one was won by Wolfsburg in the first round of the season rather easily. So, those were my thoughts on the Austrian Bundesliga at the halfway point of the regular season. So, we kind of know already a little bit about this league and usually not much does change. Is it really the halfway point with two games still to be played? Maybe not quite, but you know, we still get a good feeling of where this league is going. In any case, please let me know your thoughts on the Austrian Bundesliga and why maybe Austrian teams are not doing well this time in Europe. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll talk to you soon about more things in my Austrian Bundesliga universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!